This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Hey everybody, I'm back and I'm late because that's just the way the world works sometimes. Uh, yeah, I tried to do an episode yesterday and I didn't get off work until 3 in the morning and I was just too tired when I finally got in. I tried to make an episode in the morning and then my neighbors were blasting the Beatles, which I cannot afford to pay the rights for. And when they finally stopped, the power went out and then the internet went out when the power came back on. So uh, it was just not meant to be. What did I do while I couldn't make episodes? Well, I worked on my game shelf. So uh, I think I finally have almost enough room for board games. I finally found some place for Cthulhu to sit um, and that's not staring at me while I sleep. And those are the main accomplishments of what I've achieved. So with that, we have 70 campaigns to get through. Not all of them are great. I will just try to glance over the ones that really need help and just say a couple things and move on so that the episode doesn't get too crazy. But that's just it. I don't make a determination of how many games come out every week. <laughs> that just happens. I wake up on a Tuesday and I look up and I go, oh God, oh God, there's so many. And uh, try to get an episode out somewhere in the middle of the night so you guys can go and enjoy your weeks. So uh, yeah, uh, let's get to it, I guess. First up, we have a Murder by Moonlight investigation game. It takes place in 1950s Hollywood, and you're going to be doing everything you can to solve a murder. And that's pretty cool. It's got all those uh, pulp feels to it, the old detective-style movies, uh, you know, that kind of fun aesthetic. It's got uh, a guy with too many chins, a lady in sunglasses, dudes with cigars, all that kind of stuff thrown in. The... Um, Film noir experience is what they claim to have, and I like all of those things. I hope it's good. All of the pieces and everything look really cool. Uh, Cost-wise, it is uh, $32 uh, in U.S. money, so it's comparable to what you would get in uh, the, a store box. But as with the store boxes and everything else, uh, Hunt a Killer, and, um, closed case or cold case files, and all the other ones. Your mileage may vary, depends on the company, but this one looks pretty neat. At least it's made here in LA and it's supposed to be about it. If you like the aesthetic and you like the um, LA Confidential aspect, read LA Confidential. Read any of the Kenneth Onger books about Hollywood Babylon or any of that kind of stuff. Maybe it will help you get in the mood for this kind of uh, film noir experience. The old Hollywood stuff, all the scandals and everything else. I wish one day somebody would make a really good Black Dahlia version of this type of game because that is the biggest Hollywood world uh, craziness thing uh, that could come out of it. And there was a pretty good TV show that was made not too long ago, maybe five or six years ago, that suggested it was an abortion doctor. I think for you know, having a mystery and all the places you could go, it would be awesome. But maybe this achieves that same kind of feel. And Black Dahlia, I don't think was quite the 50s, but, you know, it's in that range too. So, yeah, I think it's a good setting. All right, we go from something I'm excited about to something I'm like, eh, meh. drinking games. Meh. They never do well. Uh, none of them are necessarily bad. They're, it's just the concept of, um, are you 20 still? Are you 21? Are you 22? And once you hit about 23, meh, I'm kind of done. And if you're not meh, kind of done, get a job. So uh, it's a small group uh, that fits within this range. If you're in Europe, maybe 18 fits in that range too, and you're still out there and invulnerable, and you know you never get hangovers and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, so at least they priced it right. They understand that the market doesn't have a huge place for a lot of these, but um maybe just enough to get these guys some cash and get it printed and all that kind of stuff so if you're into drinking games um maybe give this one a shot if you can sit your friends around long enough while alcohol is flowing for them to actually understand rules then we have stanley schuster's a game of swords and shields for two players this is print and play so it's a tiny game but uh you know that doesn't mean that it is in any way bad it's got more of a fanny fantasy aspect to it and you're going to have all these different uh, sword moves that I cannot pronounce. And uh, there you go. You'll be fighting back and forth, swords and shields, 
until someone eventually comes out the winner. There have been a few fencing games out there. This one takes a little bit more cartoony approach than they did. And, you know, for print and play, it's cheap. It says uh, two bucks well, to say a thank you and four bucks to get the print and play version. So even the default 10 bucks that Kickstarter throws in, you buy two and a half of these. You know what I mean? So it's not that expensive. GameFound's busy this time. So we have Blade Rondo, Japanime Games. Um, this is one of those anime things that I don't quite understand. Seems to be a card game with maids. I don't know. Um, the Lolita look uh, is fairly popular. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you would call it because it's probably something in Japanese I can't pronounce that is very specific to this appeal. And uh, that appeals to a lot of people that are out there. I have just never been one. I have uh, difficulty putting the word salad that the <laughs> that the games are named after together to try to figure out if it means anything. Um, so, and generally it doesn't. So uh, I figure most people are buying it based on the art style or a particular character that they might like. And money-wise, uh, they're okay. They're doing pretty darn well and they're well into stretch goals. So I'm gonna guess this is a, an existing IP and if you enjoy it, you can get five games on it in this campaign. Normally, I uh, get rid of the clothing ones, and this one kind of snuck in. Fiend or Friend Folio, Fiendish Apparel. Uh, if you want one of these designs, uh, they seem to be unisex. Um, I don't know. I like big brains, and I cannot lie. That would be cool. Uh, and then, you know... This one I like the stay thirsty kind of thing, but I'm not the type of person that should be wearing that. Um, yeah, clothes. If you wear clothes with logos, I don't wear any clothes with logos ever. They can pay me if they want to uh, be advertised on my on my person. Um, but if you wear that kind of thing, then maybe these will help. Then we have Fortress of Terror, Roland Wright Solo. So uh, if you can't get your buddies over, then maybe you will enjoy this. Uh, kind of an RPG, it's called the Roll With It Adventure Module System, and that's pretty cool. Maybe you can pass it around to different friends, maybe uh, say, hey, try this one game, and then, you know, maybe get it back. <laughs> but uh, uh, maybe it'll entice some friends to jump in and play with you. Nothing too expensive, just a little bit of maps and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, five bucks gets you the basic rules. The rest of it is stuff that you'll probably have to keep around. Uh, dice, I'm sure you have bajillions of them. Pencils, uh, you know, people type a lot now, but I'm sure you can find one. And uh, a couple other things. It's nice. Uh, uh, solo games, journaling games, game book games, that kind of thing. It's nice to have those around every once in a while. Just to kill time when uh, you want to clear your head. Then we have the next game found. Uh, game and this is for Northwood a solo game about trick taking so solo gaming big and this time it is a much more youthful uh, bend to it uh, da -da 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 -da. it says that it's been given a 2021 54 card design uh, accolades so that means it should be fairly cheap because it's one standard deck of playing card size playing cards and that gets economies of scale better than just about anything. So 15 bucks gets you a box, gets you the deck. You can even get your name inside the box if that's what you want. Uh, you can get add-ons of previous games. And I think Black Sonata is the only one that comes to mind that I remember uh, from a previous Kickstarter, which was kind of neat. And you can even play the game on their website so you don't have to go out and buy anything. So these are people that are really trying to get your money and uh, doing it by providing value, so kudos to them. And we have the Paradox Initiative, which I'm surprised is not being sued by Par Paradox Interactive <laughs> for confusing the uh, the marketplace. Um, but hey, maybe it works uh, pretty well as just a game. As long as they don't name the company that, maybe it'll be fine. And it looks like it's a bunch of UFO stuff that uh, is pretty neat. Lots of tokens. Um, I don't know why there's a bird and it seems like it's in space, but maybe that's the paradox part. You get upgraded components that are clay, just like they uh, have in the uh, gaming tables in Vegas, or at least they used to. I don't know, they've probably gone cheap on that. And then you can get the Mad Lab Assistant uh, version, or, you know, if you're a retailer and you're watching my thing, I, I'm, I don't know, you're probably, uh, you know, 
you probably need to spend more time at the store. <laughs> These episodes are really long, man. I don't know how you can pay attention. Um, but uh, there you go. Scorecards, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's, it seems like um, a space exploration type of uh, game similar to maybe ISS Vanguard. Uh, what's that? There's There's been a ton of uh, space exploration type games that are coming out. This time, uh, each, I guess, land that you in, uh, encounter is going to have some type of puzzle involved, and you'll do some type of harvesting. It's a neat idea. So I don't see a lot spaceship related, so maybe it's more just a, focusing on the planet side, and uh, I kind of like both. So I kind of put the, uh, not kind of, I did put the uh, war game stuff that's 3D printable in with the rest of the strategy game stuff this episode. Uh, I figured there's just so much stuff going on to rather than wait till the rest of the 3D printable stuff, I'll put it all up front so you can kind of see it get mixed in. Sometimes I'll do it, sometimes I won't. It's going to depend on my energy level. Uh, this is 28 millimeter things for the 1944 Battle of Hurtgist between the U.S. and Germany because we were the ones on that part. Otherwise, it would have been Russian against German. And uh, if you are aware of this battle and you've been waiting for miniatures that go along with it, I think you're pretty much set. You already know what you need. You have uh, tanks, you have riflemen, you have whatever different type of uh, military weapons and soldier types that were out there during this battle. More being unlocked if uh, more money goes to it. So if you need more for your armies, for your battles, for your whatever games that you have, wargaming-wise, then maybe give these guys a shot. It is already into stretch goals, so it just needs more eyeballs, more money thrown at it for people that are interested. Um, and then hopefully you get all the cool tanks and things that are on the stretch goal list. We've been seeing a lot of campaigns for Napoleonic War stuff, and here's another one. Now we have Cavalry, and all 3D printable. You probably want a resin printer for these guys, and they all look super cool. I had to actually look up some of these outfits when I was doing the Hellboy board game because uh, it looked like some of the units in the undead uh, cavalry that are in that game had similar uniforms. So it's kind of neat seeing how they all work out, what the different colors mean, and uh, all the different... Uh, pieces of the uniforms trying to get them all right so that's a fun part of the hobby these guys i think are from the early 19th century and they're pretty well detailed you have some various uh wounded and other support characters that might be uh, uh, along for whatever diorama or gaming you're doing so if you've been picking up all these napoleonic uh uh, characters, you've been picking up all these uh, troops and units and all that kind of stuff. Here's some more for you to help fill out, and I hope they all work together for you. Dead Theorists, the philosophical card game for aspiring philosophers and academics. I took one philosophy class, and I was like, this doesn't make any damn sense. I thought like Einstein's thought experiments and things like that were pretty cool, but um, yeah, <laughs> Not for me, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm much more practically minded. Uh, 25 bucks for the game, and then you can get a zine to go along with it. And I'm not sure how accurate the um, philosophies are, but uh, I guess if you're into it, you can argue with other people and then maybe argue about the game with the game for, uh, for your own entertainment. It just seems like something that'll never end and be a constant argument. Although that whole salon culture seems pretty cool, like where people will just go around and then they say their wacky thing and then you have a bunch of drinks and you move on to the other thing. You're not stuck in a conversation with people forever. You can move them around. That seems cool because it's got a built-in escape plan. And when people talk philosophy, that's what I want is to escape. Maybe escape from Stalingrad Z, Zombie World War II. Now we're talking about my kind of world war against the zombies. So you have a scenario book that you can play out. You can see how cool the different pieces of artwork and all look. Um, why hasn't there been a World War II version of Zombicide? Hmm. Everybody likes to kill Nazis. So, yeah, that's uh, 
kind of like the the standard fun thing to do, right? In any game you've got, if you can kill Nazis in it, then I mean, you at least know it's going to be some kind of fun. And uh, some neat different looking different characters, uh, as you can see. I think one yeah, is he using the gun for a crutch, or no? He's just holding it down. Why would he keep holding it if he has to switch to the handgun? I don't know. But uh, we've got zombies of various types. You can use these in lots of different games. Fort Hendrix is out, and there's other modern zombicide uh, characters, or uh, modern zombicide sculpts of characters that are zombies. And you can even get yourself uh, a foam box. I don't like the foam boxes because I've found that they rub off more stuff than they protect from. But uh, if that's your style, then that's your style. Comes in an ammo can. That is pretty neat looking. Uh, have that on the shelf. Actual ammo cans. Let me look at mine. I don't think you can fit an actual game into those, so it'd be nice to have one game sized. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a neat aesthetic. Otherwise, it looks like the Zombicide World War II. That is not a knock. That just, you know, hey man, they sell a lot of games. If you're a Zombicide World War II, you're going to get a lot of money from a bunch of backers too. Next up is Skirmish Chess, it's supposed to be quick and awesome chess, maybe because the board is smaller and that's the concept. Um, I mean, it's a neat idea, 3D printing it, meaning you can put all these different colors and then maybe you can set different hazards, uh, areas on the board you can and can't go to, uh, setting the uh, uh, trees and things in the way. Otherwise, you can just put masking tape on the board. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's that's fine. I think it's a neat idea, a different way to change it up. Maybe the, like, Queen's Gambit 3030, and then they'll have Skirmish Chess. Oh, man, Robotech Miniatures game. This game has attempted to be come out from a lot of different places. Um, Robotech, the license was held by Palladium Games, and they tried to come out with a Kickstarter really early on in the Kickstarted world. And they were not able to fulfill the game um, for, all, I'm sure, a ton of different reasons. This is a new attempt. They're going to give it a go. First time creator, though. So we hope that these creators, developers, and engineers are all really good. Um, that they're going to be able to finalize it. Because the people that have tried to make Robotech or try to buy Robotech games in the past have gotten burned, like I said, by Palladium. So I would like to see them finally get the things that they're looking for and go from there. Um, you can see lots of different big robots, just like all anime, not really my thing, but uh, I do hope uh, from watching Kickstarters you know, happen over and over and over again and following Palladium books, hoping that they finally are the, the uh, gonna get out from the end of their own way and then be hugely successful because they have a great idea and good system and the megaversal system um, and lots of great IP that uh, hopefully it all works. If you did want to play, you they no longer manufacture the Robotech Palladium books, so you'll have to find them in a used bookstore. But uh, you could utilize all these minis and end up playing the game that you thought you were going to get with all those cool books that have been around for 20, 30 years or longer um, if you get this one and it all works out. Then we have a Universal Cribbage Board. It's a game that I have no information on in my brain. I have never played. Uh, it just looks like, uh, to me, it looks like one of those breadboards that you got as a rector set. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. But um, yeah, it seems to be emulating this 1930s game box and coming up with a modern package for it. If it's cheap enough to make sense, it says 25 bucks gets you an instruction booklet, 60 bucks to get you the game. Um, yeah, 20 bucks for an instruction booklet is a joke. You should just give away the rules for free, especially if this game has been around forever, <laughs> and then get people interested in buying the board. Or bring the price down and have it be print and play for the rule book and uh, just take the money from there and don't worry about manufacturing it and do whatever the other thing you want with. Trying to pay, get somebody to pay 25 bucks for something that's not a miniatures game, buyers are way too savvy. They understand the, the X1 and X2 of this uh, value proposition. 
they know what their alternatives are and it ain't going to be spending 25 bucks on a, a rule book. They could spend that 25 bucks and get a game. Like, don't let it die. This is co-op. And you can play one to four players, so you can do solo if you want. But this is about hunter-gatherers. You're going to be surviving out there. Uh, it's not quite like don't starve, but, um, you know, the same kind of vein. Do everything you can to find uh, things when you have basically nothing. You've got a stick, you make a knife. You make <laughs> fire, you make a thing, and maybe you'll survive. $39 US, uh, lots of different uh, troglodyte style individuals, hunter gatherer type individuals. Um, it's a pretty cool idea. It's a neat uh, way to introduce you know, competition. It's fun and all that kind of stuff. I did play Don't Starve. I thought that was a neat uh, math game. But once you kind of figure out the, the math of the puzzle, then it's just kind of the same thing over and over again. Hopefully there's enough randomization and other weird things to keep that from happening here. Uh, even just having it as a board game um, and having other players with you uh, as you create it uh, can help it get keep it from getting boring. Uh, I think most people will enjoy it long enough to get value though. Birds of a feather, Western North America. My neck of the woods. I've seen some of these guys. Um, this is a birding journal for one to seven players, making a family-friendly board game. Wingspan has made birds a big deal. So, uh, yeah, if you want to play more bird-themed things, if you want that relaxation and enjoyment and uh, having that competition. Whoa, raptors! So I guess there's even some some splody uh, bloodletting and things going on in here. So it's not completely void of violence. You can play it on Tabletopia. Check it out. You could read the rules for free. Hmm. Wonder how how successful that makes things when you're trying to get people to buy a game. Huh. I wonder why I keep uh or uh, bothered to suggest that. Huh. An app available also to track things. It's nice to have that down. Uh, lots of people have um, moved over into that uh, space. You probably see another thing pop up later that wants to sell the app first and then the game. And you can compare the success of some small game like this and how it's presented as a board game first and then has an app as an add-on to the app game that might appear later in the episode uh, trying to tack on the board game side. So the, uh, it, there's a small difference, but it's an important one. Coming at you out of Poland from Lucky Duck and Van Ryder. These are folks that um, they have lots of successful things from Van Ryder. I just picked up, I think it was Van Ryder, the Final Girl series. Lucky Duck, I'm staring at Chronicles of Crime right in front of me because I play that a fair amount. Uh, you can see they made a ton of money. This time we have a miniatures game. Lucky Duck is known for making great apps integrate into their games. Uh, and then it's not like you're having a replacement of the game. It's a required part of it. You have a solo mode as possible. Uh, Van Ryder makes solo mode games, which is what Final Girl uh, ends up entirely being. But now you also have cool miniatures and other things. I'm thinking about picking this one up. I'm not 100% sure. It's got really good reviews from Quackalope and other people. Uh, some of the stuff that Quackalope likes, uh, I have enjoyed. Uh, we have a lot of, the, uh, Jesse and I have a lot of the same purchases. And he apparently gets a lot more time to play games because that he made a job out of that. I still have a job, never get to play my games. Um, but it seems really neat. I like the idea of it. It feels very Vampire the Masquerade to me. I like that aspect of it. All the moody 1980s Nolans kind of world Oh man, I had such a good time in the Arkham Horror card game playing the the Lugaru uh, uh, missions and things that were in there. And as you can see, there's a werewolf here. So a lot of it feels just the right kind of thing for me. So it seems like to be a lot of fun to play. Uh, Baron Samedi did not, I, I don't know if he made it into um, the Lobotomy 2 game. Um, we'll see what happens when things get added in the, the late pledges and all that, but it'd be nice to have one of those guys. I can pick it up here. Uh, yeah. 
Seems like it would be neat. It's just the type of stuff I normally buy. So I hit save. I don't know if I'm going to buy the whole thing yet. Because if I get it, I'll end up getting the whole thing. So it's like 59 euros up to 139 euros. So that's $152. And there was some questions. Like if you got the whole damn agency, I think uh, it comes with everything uh, necessary. Uh, but I don't know, there was some other things like maybe a play mat, um, the plastic tokens and stuff like that. I wasn't exactly sure if everything purchasable was included in that. So I'll have to look around. Oh, I guess it does have plastic tokens. Uh, I'll be keeping an eye on it and see if that's where it goes. But right now I might spend the 150 bucks. So heads up, they might get more tabletop fighting games that's what a kind of clash is supposed to be very anime and spider inspired so it's two player only it is competitive it's supposed to play in about 30 minutes and then you have a wide variety of anime inspired fighters so that's cool uh as i see here this character is from battlecon um i don't know if battlecon is uh from the same content or characters or all that but that definitely is a character that is included in the battlecon plaque pack for street uh, masters so i hope they're all the same company iconoclash is available in a, the demo version if you wanted to play it on tabletop simulator so that part's cool if you're a fan of anime gaming and you want to have people fight back and forth you can get this one Last one for Game Found, we have another space experience, Last Light. So they're doing all right, 175 grand, two to four players. Uh, so 4X, Exterminate, Expand, Exploit, Explore, and Spinny Rotating Board. You're going to be running around doing what you can to blow each other up, mine resources. Uh, be part of all these interesting alien factions. This type of game has popped up many, many times before. And the reason for that is it's popular. So people like it. Um, you can see there's been some upgraded components added to things. And that's all kinds of neat extra plastic and all that kind of fun. So, yeah. I'm hoping that all the troubles with China are... Uh, sorted out because i see a lot of anything i see a lot of plastic on i'm kind of like eh, it's definitely gonna come from china that probably means delays but tabletop simulator you can check it out and see if it's for you it has expansions up to eight players so uh if you have a big family or lots of people coming over you like playing long games then this might be the one uh for you a lot of the other ones we've looked at and we'll continue to look at only go to about four players we have the return of food games what's on the menu full course building board game you can be your own Escoffier and uh, make your own fun uh, menus happen. So, yeah, maybe as you play the game, you'll get inspired and then you'll actually uh, make the things. You, sometimes you make yourself some mistakes. So you got your Pepto and your other problems to go along with it. I definitely have been I'm too much of a glutton, which is why I'm trying to lose weight now. <laughs> um you get all these different uh, neat little action cards. Has seems to have a lot of humor that goes along with it. You get the pepper mill you can pass around. You get the chef's hat. So there's lots of theme going on. You even can get yourself uh, an apron. That's cool. Maybe you wear it. Maybe you don't. Uh, my last name's Cook. So my uh, apron says Kiss the Cook on it. And it's pretty darn cool. Holotype. This is a worker strategy placement game about dinos two to five players so that's pretty darn neat if you're not following the benji thomas channel about dinosaurs you should be and if you aren't uh checking out the new david attenborough prehistoric planet when it arrives you should be as well if you're a fan of dinosaurs so here you go you get um yeah it's a game of all these different types so uh doesn't seem to have a whole lot oh you can get people to be eaten as well <laughs> Nah, I'm sure they're just workers. But um, yeah, it looks like you're pulling your own Jurassic Park uh, prequel in the sense that you're out there digging up the dirt, looking for the dinosaurs and all that, as opposed to setting up fences and you know having them escape. It doesn't seem to be that kind. It's more about the digging, but that's still fun. Uh, setting up this, uh, what was this? 
Paleontologists can bump any other worker, including other paleontologists. And uh, I guess uh, you can push people out of your roles in order to take over the points that are associated with them. So that's neat. Oh, wow. Check it out. They even made a Python test program to, I guess, work out all the different iterations. That's smart. So maybe it's made by some smart people. Back to the war stuff. 300 houses from Fredericksburg of 3D printable stuff. Uh, I th Something happened. Well, why, why can't we see anything? Ah, uh, okay. That, I just need to refresh it. Um, so here we have the Sergeant Pledge, a bunch of different houses. Uh, Fredericksburg is Virginia, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure it's in the south. If you had any other reason to have some simple buildings uh, for your... Uh, terrain then this will set you up pretty well $22 gets you some houses let's see how much the most expensive one is $87 for for all the cool stuff so um, I guess good for dioramas if you're gonna make a small model of the town if you're gonna do something to the battles all that kind of stuff some type of urban planning I don't know then maybe this will work for you and we have the cat traveler in Asia board game uh, about life goals in Asia. Um, okay. So it seems to, I don't know, be a version of Felix the Cat or something maybe early on. Uh, blended with Heathcliff and some type of other weird things. So travel on top of it? I don't know. Um, it's I, I guess it would basically be a travel guide book that has been expanded out into a bunch of cards and somehow you randomize that and call it a game also from asia but more of a game because it shows more of the interaction between the pieces is seu two-player tile laying game they have a lot of these types uh, of games in asia and it seems to be fun for them um and you create the board with all these different paths and you have the two characters, black and red. And you do the best you can to manipulate the board, have the arrows point in a way beneficial to you, not to them. So lots of strategy and yeah. More mystery boxes, more Asia. World Traveler Society about 1930s Asia. Solve a mystery that has taken place in the 30s and then has recently been um, unveiled and yeah lots of neat pieces same kind of thing as the first one we saw um very thematic ingredients tossed into this very lovely box from the look of it how much is all that going to run you it is going to run you uh 26 dollars to get it in a notebook 69 dollars for the wooden box so 40 bucks for this box which is not bad if it's made well. Um, I mean, it's probably not going to be made great, but it's probably going to still be pretty good. This is the notebook on the cheaper version. Also, looks pretty cool. Um, it'd be cool if you get both uh, pieces in one, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So you might back this, honestly, just to get the furniture. <laughs> um, yeah, 150 bucks, after 159 bucks gets you all the different pieces uh, to go along with it and lots of, of uh, extra um, tactile experiences to go along with it. So if you're a fan of the aesthetic of that period of Asia, I think this is a uh, shoe-in to get all your money. And um, uh, I, I mean, you show up at your friend's house with all this cool stuff. I mean, it's that's an experience. Get them to chip in though. Have everybody put in 40 bucks, and then you get it. Family card game of Big Fish. A lot less money. Kids will love it, so they say. Uh, there's backs and there's fronts. I don't know. Oh, there you go. Looks like you are going to be uh, set with cards that are made randomly, and you are going to be doing what you can to make chains of them. And I guess that sets your scoring. And maybe you get to steal cards, keep people going. I don't know. There's a 3D printed silverfish. Ooh, there you go. You can make a fish while you're making fish that are cards. 
And then you can play Go Fish. So this one's kind of confusing. This is the DC deck building game, 10th anniversary from Cryptozoic. The confusing part is um, usually when they do these big expansion boxes, you can get a version that has everything. This, this is the retailer pack. Here we go. This $345 um, version, that's the big one that sells a lot of the stuff. It doesn't necessarily come with everything. It comes with a lot of stuff, but it doesn't come with everything. And I think that it's a mistake that they don't have a means of picking up everything. So uh, the DC deck building game is the DC version of Marvel Legendary that other companies come out with. This time you have uh, the DC Multiverses uh, boxes all thrown together. And I think they come in new boxes. So it's not new content necessarily if you get the really big version. Um, although you can get new content as part of this with different expansions and ways for you to have complete storage of all your uh, cool stuff. These crossover packs and these all this crazy things that you can get. Um, I, this is not the pledge <laughs> that I talked about for $345. This is just all the stuff that they've come out with before. So you're kind of missing out on a few of these. Uh, I wish they had a way, I don't know if they have to reprint it or what the case is, to have everything come out for people that want it. But that's kind of a neat neat deal if you DC is your thing and otherwise you were playing Legendary and you were just playing Marvel. Now you can go to Cryptozoic and get a bunch of new cool stuff and a big box to keep all your cards in so they're not spilling all over the place. Then we have Realm of Thrall, the mobile game that wants to be a board game. Here's the board game. And now they want you to pay for them to get a mobile game. Did it need a mobile game? So this is what I was talking about. Um, it's neat. All these different pieces of artwork are really cool. But this board is boring. <laughs> you had all those pieces of artwork and none of it made it here. You know what I mean? It didn't come out to be exciting. It didn't And no interesting pieces or anything like that. Either have a mobile game, have a board game, pick one of them, and make it the best you can do. And then if it's successful, make the other. So uh, I think board game is a place to start. Get it exciting. It's a lot less development costs and uh, then work about the mobile side of things. Maybe you can get people interested. We are heavy with space exploration this week. I do not know what is in the water that's making everybody want to go to space. Maybe we just want off this hot planet. I don't know, but this is stellar exploration. It's another one. They say it's eco-friendly though. That's fine. Um, 49 euros depending on how much you get cost-wise to the end. You see you got wooden meeples and STL files you can print yourself. So that brings some of the cost down. Uh, some people have said nice things. And uh, you can be various factions as you would expect. So you get a free upgrade pack as part of Kickstarter up to the wooden spaceships. So that's cool. Uh, and the STLs if you want to be even cooler. So... Uh, you have a wealth of space exploration options. Choose the ones that all look good. You know, they each have their own special differences. And um, who knows, maybe you'll get more than one. Table Golf, a dexterity game, doing pretty well. So I'm going to guess it's like table football uh, where you're flicking things. And yeah, so I guess the ball is within this device and you're doing what you can to get as close as you can to the hole story of my life and um yeah dexterity game i would like it with uh, a windmill and a clown head that you throw it into because i'm more of a mini golf than a golf person but you know each you know to each your own if sam jackson wanted to play golf with me i'd go play that much i will say more anime themed games. This is Zonia. Zionia. X Iona. I don't know. Uh, but there you go. You got the various uh, Naruto looking individuals. And then you start playing with whatever faction and hero you want. And they each have their own 
benefits and weaknesses. And then you're going to have some assists and some ways to hit each other. <laughs> Pretty much a standard fighting game. If you like this aesthetic, if you like these characters, uh, I don't know if it's based on new IP or an existing IP, but it would definitely help if it was an existing IP. If it's a new one, then you got to show some type of maybe storytelling to go along with it and uh, get people involved. Then we have more anime styles in these hundred cards of custom art. Uh, I guess you could make uh, anyway, expressions that fit that are possibly from. Uh, it's like Cards Against Humanity with anime expressions. I don't know. If you're a big anime nerd, then this is something that makes sense to you. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's like, it seems to be you're making memes. You know, you take the picture and then you throw a caption underneath. That seems to be what this basically comes down to being. That being the case, um, let's see, cost-wise, uh, $25 is one copy of this game, which is basically a couple packs of cards. Costs are super high right now, so um, that's understandable, but you could get two decks printed from like make playing cards or any of that kind of stuff uh for maybe 10 bucks a piece you don't need a fifteen thousand dollar goal to get this done um i think the goal is set too high for what this game actually turns out to be and they would be better off just maybe making some make playing card um things that uh they're charging out of and then they can still make some money off of the art and everything that they've been they've begun it's just costs are way too high right now to hit scale and that's pinching everybody. So maybe that's the real reason why this isn't doing as well as it could be doing. Then we have the leader challenge, which is an educational trivia board game, 30 to 80 minutes for two to four players. Um, let's see some questions. Uh, they don't really show a lot of questions, do they? If you're going to have a trivia game, you got to show more questions uh, as to how the game works. And it seems to be, oh, it's about technology and we got all these fake monies and here's all this other stuff and here's our rules and blah, 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 blah. Uh, the same thing with jokes. You got to show your jokes just like you got to show your trivia. And then that shows people that there's going to be good questions in there. And that's really what sells it is having good questions. The only way to express that there's good questions is to show them. And that might be something to help you out, uh, especially this is coming from London. Technology is a worldwide thing, but everything is local. So um, there might be characters in this that nobody knows about because they're from a different country. We have Drunk Tales, the horror movie. It should say game at the end because I think it confuses people as to what it actually is. When I first saw it, it looked like it was misfiled. So keep that part in mind. It is a really a game. Three to six players not having a solo mode does not help. Um, you can be the nerd, the beef, or the skank. That's cool. Uh, these are not complicated cards to put out. And the board doesn't seem all that complicated either. They're just standees and rather cheap standees to begin with. So um, the cost of this game is not high. Maybe the artwork, because th these are pieces of generated art that somebody has to get paid for uh costs a lot but the making of the of the components is not that high so when they're sitting there asking for 30 grand um you can get this done um from one of the on-demand uh, board game companies uh that just shoves a bunch of pawns or other things and prints your stuff out and i think that might be the way that this has to go um just because wherever they're choosing to get this printed at is way too high uh, and I think that's affecting the bottom line and they have to change the top to explain what it really is. Is it a horror movie? Is it a game? Is it a drinking game? What is it? It's right now currently confusing. It's going to have a hard time finding an audience. I think they should focus their marketing on it being more about the horror side. They might not need to change the box, but they got to change the way that it's described at the top. Uh, to get people more excited, show more about how the game runs rather than just a bunch of people 
and maybe some pictures of the board. Because there's not enough exciting artwork going on. You really got to explain how it all works. We're only about halfway through the episode and it's already feeling like it's going to take forever. <laughs> so this is some characters. Some she says are not safe for work. That's arguable. Um, and those are the characters. So if you want to utilize these, I guess they come with some map packs and other things. If you like her art style, you can check it out and use them as your NPCs or your PCs. And that part's up to you. And uh, she makes Eldendale homebrew adventures. So whatever map or character or VTT or whatever you want to use, then just buy it from her and you're set. Fantasy Trip. This is from uh, the good folks at Steve Jackson Games. This is their um, quick adventure role-playing game. And this time you get Quest 6 and 7. So a whole new set of new adventures for you to play through. Uh, I think you can get the previous system stuff uh, from them. Steve Jackson makes a lot of good stuff. Uh, they are, what's this one? So nine bucks gets you the print version of six and seven. Five bucks gets you the PDF. I mean, these guys make GURPS, they make all kinds of things. Uh, you can get other soft covers and lots of combinations of the previous books in the series. So if you've been looking to play some quick RPG fun, then maybe Fantasy Trip will help you do that. And uh, you can find some other good Steve Jackson things in this uh, fairly quick campaign. And then we have Pipe World. This is Monster Manual Zines. And these are variously, ex you know, uh, Nintendo inspired. So a lot of stuff from Mario uh, thrown in there. So if you needed to add any of these folks from other um, gaming systems into your RPGs, 5e, just neutral, survive this. Those are the formats that they provide. Neutral works for everything, so you can adjust to how you want. Then maybe Pipe World will Mario it up for you. Straight out of Middle Eastern mythology, Genies and Afridis. Uh, so there we get some close-up. Medusa Miniatures knows what they're doing. They've created a bunch of miniature campaigns before, been very successful. So a lot of people don't understand to throw a nice high contrast, <laughs> well, you know, created, uh, um, easy to see picture of your minis. That part's pretty cool. Female genies, different uh, characters there. Now that we have the noble genie warlock, I think it's really cool that you have uh, more content that would work pretty well with it. This is previously uh, created stuff from uh, Medusa minis. Like I said, they, they're used to making pretty good uh, pieces of content. Uh, you've probably seen all these before on my channel. So here's just some more, and you have access to getting the previous releases, which is also pretty cool. Adventures After Death into the Hereafter, not just a Clint Eastwood movie made to make you cry. Uh, Sigil Entertainment comes with this 5e 64-page uh, setting with three to seven uh, six-level characters running around in the afterlife. You can get the preview PDF, and that's kind of neat. Certificate of death for your characters. Um, so some interesting options of running through underworlds. And uh, is it like the uh, Divine Comedy? I don't think so, but it does have some neat ideas, and there's certain concerns you'll have if you are already dead and uh, then I guess you just don't have to worry about dying again, huh? Then we have uh, this Lost Tome of Monsters which are pins and metal D20s and different designs and things you can utilize how you want. So it's a cartoony change up that you can use um, both as a standee or as a pin that parts up to you. That would be the only reason I haven't chucked it from the episode because I usually get rid of the uh, uh, stuff that's just clothing. Um, but these can actually be used as standees. So that part is pretty darn cool. Guards, guards, guards. I do not remember the reference. One of you guys in the comments told me what it was and it's totally valid. It is based on a, um, a different game or a book series uh, as far as the reference, but there's guards. There's lots of different types of guards. You can put these in anywhere, any city, um, some dead ones, some live ones, various types of armaments. One of the things about guards is they wear uniforms. So if they're uh, 
you know, if they got a different look, they all got to have a different look, but they can have similar, similar, similar weaponry. I'm getting the point. I've spoken too much already. Um, guards also use siege weapons when they're attacking things. Um, even got yourself a, a Da Vinci tank involved in there. Uh, different characters that will pop in with the uh, stretch goals popping in too. So they've got a lot of good poses, a lot of different looks to each type. And uh, yeah, check it all out and see if any of these will help you as they have different races, different species, different weapons. Make it so you can have a lot of guards. Initiative can be really hard to track, especially with a lot of different people. So they have initiative towers, which are made to help you. So these can stack up and you can put magnets or whatever you want in them. And it also keeps things looking uh, aesthetically pleasing. And you can get them in various types. You get the 3D printable ones or you get these portable ones. Just magnets that stick to this piece. And um, then you can swap them around depending on you know who, how people roll. Everybody can kind of see how it works and go from there. And uh, cheap. Pay whatever you want. That's helpful. Chris Martins designs a lot of things and gives you a lot of pieces. And I guess he had a bunch of them just sitting in his folders. So he's offered them up for your sci-fi needs. So hex bases, different uh, types of buildings and other things that might be useful depending on the size of your robots that are attacking each other, military units and all that kind of thing. So um, yeah, take a look, see if you're playing a sci-fi game. These should scale up a little bit if you wanted to do that. And uh, otherwise, you know, uh, just print them off FDM and be pretty cheap. And you'll have lots and lots and lots of terrain. Matt Colville has a new book out. This time it's Flea Mortals. And it's ways to make normal monsters more fun and interesting. So uh, you can check out 24 pages of it. That's a pretty generous amount. And... Um, 300 new stat blocks and other crazy things to be added. Uh, he makes a lot of uh, uh, books that have been very popular. And he has a popular YouTube channel. So that's why it's at a million dollars. Is because he worked really hard on making sure he had an audience to deliver it to before he released it. And the previous um, ones that he's come out with did just as well. Because the guy works hard and uh, is building his audience and always coming out with episodes. You get uh, this resin mini if you pay enough money. Um, you get shirts and other cool things to go along with it. So, yeah, the there's a few books that are also on this concept of making the monsters more interesting. And you can find those on the DMs Guild if that's what you're looking for. Uh, but give, uh, you know, if you like his advice, give his channel a look if you haven't already. Chances are you're probably already watching it if you're watching my stuff. And... Um, you know, just see if if uh, the advice and work that he's putting into the channel is something that you would like to see more of or like to be able to incorporate than this and the other books that he's created. That's what they're for. There's some stuff on cities and encounters and um, making more interesting uh, worlds seems to be what he is uh, specializing in. And you got to put characters in those worlds to make them you know, to have a passage of time and effort and do things and uh, spend energy and sleep and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, make them more fun to fight, do all that kind of stuff, get a crazy beholder. And for all you painters out there, this is absolutely not Wolverine from when he was going through Japan after the wars and living his patch. And um, this is absolutely not that because that might require some extra licensing or something like that. So this is absolutely not that. Just keep that in mind. There's claws in the hands with scar, top knot, whole thing. Very well detailed, gruff looking individual. He might be the best he is there is at what he does, but this is not Wolverine. Just keep that part in mind. Then we have a power plant that uh, is set for terrain, whatever you want to build it out of, FTM or resin. And it looks pretty neat. It also would work as an Ace Chemicals plant slash Arkham Asylum combo thing. Pretty darn big, as you can see. You might be able to scale this up or down depending on how you need. 
I'm glad those pictures are there because it looks tiny when you first look at it, but nah, this thing is huge. It's like a whole play set. So if you need some intrigue, you need a whole uh, darn near palace with power plant in the center, this guy's got you covered. You can get infections to throw on as well if you uh, want to be Zerg about it. And uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And we have Pirate Girls for 3D printing, 75, 35 millimeter, whatever you want, some painting challenges. Uh, the hats, I guess they could be witches if you wanted them to be. Uh, they do keep their clothes on, so I can actually scroll down. There's um, different versions that will pop up. As you can see, you got the lady who's uh, ready to fire away at you. And then you have the other lady who is on deck, and she's ready to go stabby stabby. And then shoot you in the face. And then we have, I'm going to look good while I prepare to stabby stabby your face. So, there we go. And Darlene, she apparently is in the middle of yoga while having her sword out. So, that's the whole setup. Like I said, if you are in need of various female characters, you have... Salt Marsh or one of those types of uh, campaigns going on. Or you want the challenge of dirty cotton clothing and the, the female form to go with it. There seem to be some things that are also leather. Uh, those are a little easier. But I would say that these torn, tattered, tattered clothes with all their different textures and things like that would be a hell of a painting cha challenge and very interesting. So, yeah pretty sweet old gods of Appalachia the role-playing game and these guys are doing super well seems to have popped out of nowhere except if you see who actually created it is Monty Cook and no relation to me but uh, Monty Cook is one of the creators of 5e I believe and has Numenera and other cool things uh, so this is just another great um, concept that they've created to be something a little bit different and yeah so it uh, seems to be still based on the cypher system which is what Numenera and all that are made on so yeah seems like uh, I don't know if they're cryptids or werewolves <laughs> or what they are necessarily that are attached to this system but um, it's got the green, the dark, and the more ancient. So that sounds pretty cool. Maybe it's like the green and the red from DC Comics with things that are out in the woods and out in the, um, the flora and the fauna. And then they have the rot, which is for fungi, and they got all the crazy stuff. Uh, maybe it's part of that kind of world. So neat stuff, though, from a great creator. There's a reason why they make so much is because they've been doing it a long time. Got a lot of people that enjoy their content. Then we have the Clash Royale, which is based on nothing, <laughs> but is made to be something super neat and cool. So you can put it however you want. These are very similar, I guess, to the Pirate Girls, but basically they are a um, tower defense for a kingdom type of game. <clears throat> and um, yeah, it's just somebody had a neat concept of a couple different characters and decided to share it with you. So you got a knight. That looks, uh, I don't know, like a spaceman uh, to a degree. And then you got all these different other things that could happen. So somebody with a neat concept for their designs. And maybe you'll enjoy it and uh, make some something happen. Use them for a char uh, character in your campaign or not. That's up to you. Then we have Eon, Ancient Greece, Volume 3, The Monsters of Myth for Dungeon Crawl Classics. So... It's about to go down, as they say. Ancient Greek mythology has lots of different monsters. This time, um, the Catobelpis, a wildebeest, kills you with its breath and has the hands of a man. Um, okay, here's what you get. Lots. Uh, the bronze bulls, the giant crabs, Hydra, uh, Hecontacaris, the, the Stymphalian birds from the um, uh, Hercules' different things that he had to do. Yeah, there's a lot going on. So me trying to pronounce it isn't going to help you understand <laughs> what all this stuff is. 
but they've uh, sarcasm series dice. Ooh, uh, I guess they have skulls, or they're just in the shape of skulls. I thought maybe they had it embedded, but they don't. Um, yeah, so it seems like they're pretty neat. A cartoony, weird version. They have some STL files that could go along with it if you're going to make your way through the labyrinth. Um, lots of different options from Sharktopus for Dungeon Crawl Classics. Uh, yeah, it's hard to have stuff to say about every single campaign. Uh, I'm, I'm winding down. These are the Claudia's Venuses. Here's what I have to say about these. The faces are great. Um, the, it's a bust. They are, uh, naked people. There are various versions of them. But each face is unique, and that makes it very interesting with their own designs and all that kind of cool stuff. Um, yeah, you can spin it around and see how each of them goes. But really, this is them, and there's not much else to it. They're well-sculpted, well-pieced. If you have anything that you want to do for particular types of skin tone practice, um, or you just needed some heads for uh, female characters that had a very, each one has a unique look to them, uh, different hairstyles, but also different faces. Look very closely at how well they sculpted those faces. Um, that could be useful for you getting uh, different challenges. It is one of the biggest challenges is keeping the detail in the faces when you're painting and still making them look um, interesting. Doesn't always have to be beautiful, but always interesting. Um, you know, that the, sometimes your application of the paint and the brush uh, takes away from the sculpt and the challenge has to be to add to it. So these are some good ones for that kind of thing. We have a deck of useful things, 5e item cards. So you need a trapped attacking chicken, you need a friendly fireball, you need whatever crazy thing that Lisa Hall has figured out. That's what they have here. So... Uh, she's done a good job of showing what she made. Made it interesting. Bag of folding. You need some origami happening. Uh, you need a ring to tell your secrets to. You need a fish hook that works all the time. All kinds of neat things. She didn't give them all away, but she showed you what her sense of humor was about and what you would get in the pieces, so that part's cool. You can get them made out of aluminum if you wanted. That is weird. Uh, that, you know, sounds like it'd be pretty heavy to carry around, but also kind of baller. I found some oat milk and ginger cookies downstairs, so I have a little bit more energy right now. Starbrain Core from Kit Bash Kingdom. This is another pretty large size um, setting that you can get and print out these big pieces, and it will go well with the other one uh, that we just looked at. This is a nice sci-fi world. Um, if you're off planet uh, or anything like that, and you even have some uh, characters that are in their own. Ooh, crazy way that doesn't look right, does it? How long can we leave it there? Um, just do to do to do to play the Jeopardy theme song. It just, just looks dirty. Uh, <laughs> I'll move on to some more high quality resin this is death plague these are some miniatures of monsters um they look like spider women and uh, hellhounds and all that kind of cool stuff these ones are death plague named but they don't necessarily all have to be flesh devouring zombies that part is up to you uh you can get the free sample pdf of the world uh but i mean this is a minis campaign so let's get to the minis Rocket Pig has made a few uh, other previous ones that are pretty cool. You get, as you can see, not just Plague Doctors. You've got other types of healers and paladins and imps. And I guess that was supposed to be a hag that has the uh, spider legs. The hags are from the Feywild, so they can be in all kinds of weird shapes. So that's pretty cool. Different ghouls. And, uh, yeah. 25 bucks gets you all these different add-ons that are probably from previous campaigns. The... Uh, Giant on the right looks familiar to me, so maybe this has come up before. Uh, very, you know, I think I'm at almost 9,400, maybe over 9,400. Ooh, I think I'm at 9,403 uh, this episode. So that's how many campaigns I've gone through. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's see anybody else get anywhere close to that number over their entirety of their careers. Uh, what I've done in almost four years now. So, yeah, check it all out. Motorcycle Nights, Halcyon Days, storytelling, role-playing game. I don't know if it's about Fonzie, but they make it seem like that's the case. It's based on the fate system, so it's more about storytelling than characters. So Red Oaks Creative, first time trying to come out with it. I wish they showed some more. But that's how it goes. You get uh, various dice things that uh, are motorcycle themed. I don't know that it's supposed to be like a Sons of Anarchy type of deal. Um, but whatever story you want to tell, whatever crazy things, if you want him to be a cowboy on the steel horse he rides, that's up to you. Next up, we got Moxie the Brutal. Can't show too much of her because uh, she naked. So uh, the concept here is uh, this lady has lots of different poses. Maybe we'll find some that aren't too bad. Um, yeah, you can see there's a lot of different things going on with this lady. And uh, she has a lot of attitudes. Most of them are kind of like the whole Tiny Tina thing that uh, people have been playing a lot of. Fits into that kind of world. Um, yeah, so she's a tiefling with a big old mace and uh, a tail. And if you like her, check it out. And you can paint her up and have as much attitude as you want in your evil female heartbreaker hell raiser. And if you do not have a lot of time but you want to play anyway, these are backup plans called the quarter shops. They uh, are zero plan adventures that you can just pick up and start playing with i don't think zero but maybe close to zero uh comparatively close to zero two books you got layers and labyrinths um you get all these uh this thing looks pretty cool like the the hellbound dracula carriage thing and then you got roads and ruins uh so if you don't have time to plan but you have time to play or if you're like you know what forget it just gonna play i'm tired of waiting tired of prep i don't care who's here let's have a game this is a book for you and that's what it's intended for so you can just get started maybe this is Fump, uh swamp crawl for morg ba and i'm always going to pronounce it wrong because i don't know how to pronounce it right but uh morg boy i think is the way that they say it in sweden it means dark castle i'm going to try and say it right should always try and say it right um but yeah if you need to infest your swamps with critters that hate you and uh, then this is the place to go to so you can get all the cool uh looking uh artwork i don't know how they remain so consistent with so many incredible pieces of artwork across so many different creators um uh, but they managed to make it work this is a highly inspirational system and setting for people and i have been in awe over the last couple of years at how well they make it work so if this swamp does not swallow you something else will that is a way to live be on the lookout and maybe if you're out there in the swamp you find a tree house don't trust nobody but there could be a tree house and now you can make it your own a 28 millimeter scale will fit most of your minis it is 3d printable and uh, you can even set yourself up with a, a little uh, LED that flickers, make a campfire. All kinds of cool things. Trap doors for easy printing. Neat. Uh, pieces of terrain. Works in a lot of different scenarios. You can mix and match however you choose. There even are some merchant tiers for people to uh, print out and sell. If that's your thing, you want to offset your costs, then uh, you can do that too. And yeah. Some neat, neat pieces. Pumpkin patches, all that kind of thing. Get yourself ready for pumpkin season way, way, way early. And then we have the Factions of Galadoria. Plastic miniature accessories for uh, whatever game kit bashing that you're going to do. Ah, uh, there we go. So, some neat terra terrain, scatter terrain, that kind of stuff. I don't think these are printable. I think you are going to be buying these. But these are all pretty well... Uh, made from the look of it 
dwarf size, human size, different banners. Some cool stuff going on. So take a look at what Galadoria offers and see if it will fit into your uh, types of missions and things that you want to play out because, you know, they're pretty solid quality. So why not give them a look? Then we have the Fast Core Rulebook Multi Genre RPG System. Um, the idea here is to be a generic system, but what they want is to make it uh, cinematic, which means it will focus less on particular rules. And um, it seems to be based on a discussion <laughs> that was had with the Savage Worlds people. So maybe if you like the simplicity that Savage Worlds brings to a lot of other more complicated systems like Rifts or Deadlands, then maybe this will even get more streamlined. Uh, so um, the idea here is, like I say, to be fast. So you're not bogging yourself down with extra rules. You're going to have some D10s, just make some quick decisions, and uh, just keep playing. So if that's the type of group you have, wherever, sci-fi, fantasy, whatever reason why you might be using this, if uh, GURPS wasn't doing it for you, if Savage Worlds wasn't doing it for you, then maybe give this one a shot, and uh, you'll be able to jump into your storytelling your way, the fast way. Then we have the Infernal Descent. These are 3D printable things that take you to hell. So that's pretty cool. Um, stuff you might find in Avernus. Some stuff if, if you're in the Blood War, if you get traveled down there, you can print these uh, guys out in clear crystal plastic uh, resin, as you can see there, with some LEDs on the bottom. You get, go down into mines. If that's how you get down into the underworld, that part's up to you as well. And, uh, yeah, some tipped over dwarven explosives. <laughs> some things that witches might have left down there. There's a lot going on. Fungi. Yeah, so if you're in hell, if you're just in the underworld, if you're being attacked by weird monsters, you find some hellish cathedrals, there's all kinds of terrain that might be able to help you out there. I'm not going to wake my brother up to find out how to pronounce this. So this is Nejavina. I'm going to guess. Slavic folklore, mythology for 5e. Slavic folklore is very rich and kind of depressing. Um, the way that their gods and things work, it is brutal. And um, yeah, if you want this free STL of this one character, she's a noon wraith, maybe works as a banshee. Uh, different subclasses, all from the Slavic world. Um, it's not that different than any of the other worlds that are out there, except that, um, it's very much more brutal, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but you're still going to have fighters. You're going to have mages. You're going to have sorcerers. They're going to work kind of the same. Um, the functions of them will be the same. You'll have gods of the same basic things that every culture has because they're part of the daily necessities. And, um, yeah. Yeah. It's just a different way of, if you're tired of the Nordic stuff, and it's similar because they, they're they close in the time frames when they're developed, and they're not that far away from each other. Um, and a lot of these characters, like the Cockatrice and etc., they've made it out to other cultures already, and they're kind of mixed around into the various, um, uh, what you call it, mythologies. So... All kinds of neat things. Leshy here is it's kind of its own deal. Specific to the Slavic uh, characters. But you'll find a lot of parallels in uh, the fears that are, create these types of characters in all kinds of different folklores. So different gods have different personalities. and um, But everybody basically has the same, like whatever the Sarlej is just a turtle, <laughs> right? Um, they have the same needs and desires uh especially in a more simple world it's just about how the people thought of their place in the world and what they valued changed the the direction those took and gave them different names and characters and all that kind of stuff so i think it's a great idea to bring this world uh into uh, other fantasy settings so that you'll read more about it and you'll try more stuff and and explore this and hopefully many other
fantastic uh, bits of mythology. So, yeah. It hasn't been as successful because it didn't make it into comic books the same way that Thor and Hercules did. Uh, so maybe now they will. We'll see. They made it into uh, some Neil Gaiman stuff, but I think that's about it. Rituals of the Elder Gods. Dystopian, cyberpunk, alien, godlike, cosmic horror creatures. Pretty darn cool. So D12 system. Basically, it's cyberpunk with uh, Lovecraft. Um, all right, someone will read you the first chapter. That's cool. Uh, and yeah, there is a lot out there already about cyberpunk, a lot already about Lovecraft. Uh, merging them together, uh, it seems to be an interesting concept. You can check it all out, different pieces thrown in. It doesn't look like it's gotten all that sophisticated as far as artwork goes. Art sells a lot of stuff, but, you know, maybe you don't need it because it's theater of the mind. Maybe that works better for you. It's not going to get $20,000 without a huge investment in art, though. So just kind of how it runs. Um, more power to them. Good luck. Miniature bases. This is the snap and stack adaptable base system so that you can stick different bases. As you can see, they kind of hook on the bottom. That gives you different conditions if that's what you want to use them for. Or you can at least tell your characters apart. Um, so that is a, a useful deal. So if you have a lot of uh, summons or something else going on on the board, then you can keep track of your guys that way. And uh, depending the order that you use uh, with the different colors, FDM comes in a lot of different colors. So uh, if you print them out your way that way or how you want that way, then uh, that can be pretty useful. Uh, you can buy these in packs of six. You can get uh, some type of wet erase, dry erase, color combo key to help you out. Uh, it doesn't look like they're going to let you print your own so i think i've seen these on thingiverse and other stuff like that though so maybe they're compatible maybe not we have a fifth edition toolkit called emery's log of legendary eminences with 36 uh dynamic and narrative legendary eminences i do not know what a legendary eminence is i guess it's a powerful feature that comes weaker uh when a monster uses legendary resistance so, uh, yeah, I guess it's just one way. That's another thing to track to make them interesting. So as if they have a certain type of uh, power uh, supply and they're using it for their legendary resistance um, or for this legendary eminence and might make things more interesting that way. So uh, seems like it would be a neat concept if you're using a lot of legendary creatures. Got a full-on town hall for you. Pay what you want. And, yeah, there's been uh, this person, Austin. I hate when they just put their first name. You really think you're the only person named Austin, Austin Hartley? Just put your damn name. Be proud of your name. Be proud of what you made. You know what I mean? Just annoys me because then I have to go look up their name and put it in, in the stuff for you guys. It's like, ugh, why, why? You think you're Cher? You think you're Madonna? I, and, come on, man. Um, Yeah, so... uh. He built, built a house. There you go. Town hall. That's what he builds. You want to click on his name? But he doesn't want you to be able to find his name if you want to look at his other stuff. Yeah. Anyway. Um, you can take it apart. Pop your terrain in. All that kind of stuff. It just seems stupid. So many people have done that this week. and I had to find all their names and everything. It's like, do you have some pride in your work, man? Just put your name. But make it easy for people to find you. They can ask you questions if they can find you. Maybe they want you to do more. Maybe they want more what you found. You know what you've already done. I'm getting cranky and I'm getting tired. Huge set, medieval architecture, 110 houses, 120 interior environments, all kinds of stuff. You need furniture? They got furniture. You need stuff for the outside? They got stuff for the outside. You want buildings? They got it. They have been very busy creating things, and now there's a big old set. How much does it cost? Well, for $63, you get a commercial license. For $38, you get uh, the Middle Ages set. And for $164, you get everything. 
not a lot to ask for all the stuff that you get a bunch of different buildings you already saw a big collection of interior pieces this will pretty much get you set at least for a beginner if you didn't have any specific pieces that you were looking for then um i mean there's just a ton you know what i mean it's something that you can print off a bunch of them that would fit in a whole bunch of houses. You can pretty much set up a whole town for the 160 bucks that they're asking for. So it's not bad. Finally, we have some software. This is a batch creation of mapping tiles it's called Tile Forge. And uh, basically it allows you to lay down a path uh, for these basic types of terrain. And that will allow you to create a dungeon map. So yeah. There are some painted on tile laying programs similar to this. Uh, I don't know if this one has, like these checkerboard floors is something new. Maybe they have different assets and designs. They seem to be able to, as you can see, heavy grunge, medium grunge, light grunge. There's different levels of wear that they're offering. But those are, I think, part of the asset itself and not necessarily part of the software. So you could probably incorporate or import um, some changes made uh, to various assets as you go through. Maybe you can ask them about that. But uh, it's it's neat. I mean, painting on the tiles makes things much, much faster and has been something that people have been using in design maps for quite a while. So, uh, yeah, more power to them on that. That was so many campaigns. I'm so exhausted right now. I got to let this thing render. It's going to take a long time. I'll try to get it uploaded. So I guess Thursday morning you'll have it. I'll be getting my taxes done. So yay. Uh, I got one day <laughs> to do that to file extensions. Um, yeah, it's hard when your family members pass away and they dump it all on you and they haven't done their taxes since 2017 and you have to go back through and fill it all out yourself. That's why I'm so tired, guys. <laughs> That's... Uh, Hopefully, though, in the next couple of months, I'll have it sorted, but I still have to go down and fill out paperwork tomorrow so I can sort it over the next few months. Yay. You guys have a good one. Happy Easter if I don't make it back. Um, for those of you that are in the majority of the world that celebrates Easter this weekend. Otherwise, uh, I'll catch you maybe Friday night. We'll see how it goes.